Hey guys, we're gonna jump right into it today. So when I finished the gym makeover, I decided to go right into the entry hall and the dining room makeover. And the first thing, of course, I had to do was get everything out of those rooms. Let's get started. In this video, I'm gonna do things a little differently. I'm really gonna focus on showing the prep process to be able to get to the point where you're able to paint. So most of the time, this is something I skip over because it's pretty boring and slow. But prep work is really the most essential part of the project. Now, I'll be honest, I hate prep work. It's time consuming and all the work that you do will essentially be thrown out at the end because all of that paper and tape is just gonna be removed. But it's crucial to do. The more time spent in prep, the less time you'll have to spend cleaning up at the end. As a DIYer, if you want to have your final product look like it was done by a professional, then it's important to make sure that you're spending time in your prep work. If we're talking about painting a room, I probably spend about the same amount of time doing my prep work on that room as I spend physically applying the paint to the walls. The paper I'm using to cover my wood floors can be bought at most of your home improvement stores in the paint sections. I like to roll it out where I leave about a quarter to a half inch gap from the paper to the baseboard. I then cover this gap all the way around with my blue tape to hold down the paper. When I overlap a roll, I like to overlap by a couple of inches so that I don't have to worry about the paper ripping up and immediately uncovering my wood floor because it's overlaps. If the paper rips, I still have some coverage. One thing I didn't show myself doing was vacuuming. Make sure to vacuum your floors before you apply whatever protective barrier you're gonna use. Also, vacuum your baseboards. That's an area where dust and hair likes to settle on, so if you have like cats or dogs, you're definitely gonna find animal hair on those areas, and when you're painting them, if you haven't vacuumed, it's gonna be all in your paint, and you're not gonna have a good final product. Painter's tape is your best friend when it comes to doing your prep work. Depending on the size of the project, you might go through one roll or multiple rolls. For me, I ended up using a couple of rolls in this process because I had so many windows that I had to tape off. Now, it can take a little bit of time to do this, but it's definitely worth the effort that you put into it. So when I tape off, I want to make sure that my tape goes over the edge so that it actually goes onto the trim itself. And then I come back with my knife and I cut off that excess so that I ensure that I have nice sharp clean lines all the way up to the edge of the glass so I can paint right to that very edge but I won't get paint on the glass itself. In order to tape my windows, I had to remove the tic-tac-toe frame first. I'm happy to say I only broke half of the pins in the process. If you're going to leave anything on the walls or ceiling, make sure to tape it off as well so you don't get any paint on it. I am going to remove my electrical plate covers, but I'm going to leave the outlets in and not tape them because I'm just going to replace the outlets when I'm done painting. Now I'm going to clean all the surfaces I want to paint with TSP. Now TSP is great at removing oil and dirt, which you may not see it there, but it's probably there. Anytime you touch a surface with your skin, you're transferring oils onto that surface. So always make sure to clean with something before you paint so that your paint will adhere to the wall without any issues. So the last thing I need to do before I start painting is I need to caulk some areas on the ceiling trim and the baseboard where some gaps have developed because the original caulk has degraded and I want to restore that nice finished product look. Let's get this one painted. Thank you. 
For the entry hall, I decided to add some trim to create a more striking visual barrier between the upper and lower portions of the wall since they're painted in different colors. I decided to add the trim after painting the walls so that that way I wouldn't risk getting brown paint onto the white trim. I also pre-painted the trim so after installing it all I had to do was go back and fill the nail holes with wood putty and then simply do touch up paint over those holes. I bought new lights for both of the rooms and the entry hall light should have been quick and easy to install. Unfortunately, the light was simply too heavy for me to safely hold while attempting to wire it at the same time. So I had to get my wife to hold the light for me while I finished the wiring process and then mount it to the ceiling. I'm installing curtain rods above the entries into the gym and to the dining room. This way I can visually close these spaces off from the entry hall. Before I started painting, I located and marked my stud locations and then took my bracket and pre-drilled the holes for them. This way all I had to do after I finished painting was come back and enlarge the holes and attach the brackets to the walls and I don't have to risk damaging my newly painted walls trying to locate the studs and get the brackets in their correct position. Now you might be wondering why I'm using curtains to create my barrier instead of using say a sliding barn door on both of these openings which would fit perfectly. Now the main reason for that is the house being the size it is already has 60 doors in it so I don't want to add any more. In fact I would rather remove doors if possible. So the curtains will do the job that I need and I don't have to spend the money or time building doors. The dining room and the gym are mirror images of each other. They're the exact same size room with the only difference being that the dining room has a door leading into the kitchen. In order to keep both rooms like a mirror image, I'm going to be installing the same trim that I did in the gym in order to install the LED lights in there in the dining room as well so that I can also put LED lights on it. Now if you've seen my gym makeover video, you might be thinking that the LED lights that were put in the gym don't really make sense here in a dining room. Well, I don't want a dining room. In fact, I have no need for a formal dining room in this house. The kitchen has such a large kitchen dinette area that my dining room table fits perfectly in there and we've never felt the need to eat anywhere else. So I'm going to convert the dining room into a game room. With all my new trim installed, my final touch up for it was to caulk all the edges of it so that I could have that nice finished look. Now anytime you are caulking, you're going to have to wipe away the excess. So if you have painted your walls recently, like I have, you always want to make sure you've given them enough time to dry before you wipe away that excess because you always have that possibility that your paint, if not fully set, could wipe away with that wet rag. Now I didn't have that issue, but just keep that in mind. So probably the hardest part of this entire project was installing the chandelier style light in the game room. Now the light is a similar style to that which was installed in the entry hall as well. Luckily for the chandelier light, the wiring was actually the easiest part of the process. Now the light is supported by four cables. Three of them are metal wire and the fourth one is actually the electrical cable itself bringing the power down to the light. Now these cables happen to be 10 feet long and my ceiling is 9 feet high so what I was able to do was extend the cables all the way out so that my light could actually sit on the floor while I did the wiring up at the ceiling. So I didn't have to support the light at all this time while doing the wiring portion. Now I wanted the light to hang about 7 feet off of the floor and I've got 10 feet of cable and again my ceiling is only 9 feet tall. So I took my tape measure and with the light all the way on the floor, I measured up the cable two feet. And that's where I then marked with a piece of tape. So with two feet marked on the cable, that meant that once I pulled all of the rest of the cable back into it, 
then there was only two feet of cable available to hang from the ceiling. And with a nine foot ceiling, that meant my light was now hanging down roughly two feet, therefore seven feet off of the floor, which is what I wanted. With the cables marked, I started to retract them and my wife stepped in to help me out here by holding the light as I slowly retracted the cables. I didn't have to worry about the light swinging around and hitting the ladder in the process or getting damaged. Once I had retracted the cables to the point that my tape was touching the mounting box, I then started to wind the cables up and then zip tie them so that they would stay nice and neat in the box. I then attempted to mount the box to the ceiling but found that there was so much cable in there that it wasn't able to mount properly. I decided what I needed to do was I needed to remove the excess cable, so I undid my zip ties and then taking the three metal cables only, I cut off about four feet of each of those cables so that I could reduce the overall amount of cable in the box. I was then able to tuck everything back inside the box and get it to mount to the ceiling. Again, I want to stress I did not cut the electrical cable, I only cut the metal ones. Once the light was fully mounted to the ceiling, I then removed the tape from my cables and then did final adjustments on each of those cables individually as I leveled out the entire light. So the final part of this project was to paint the door leading from the game room into the kitchen. I waited till the end of the project to do the door so that I could keep the door shut and keep my dogs and cats out while I was painting the walls and ceilings. Now I'm only going to paint the side of a door that's in the game room. I'm going to leave the side that is visible from the kitchen untouched, that way it looks the same until I'm ready to paint the kitchen itself. I'm also repainting the hardware for this door using a Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze from their Universal Paint line. I've used it on a lot of other hardware in the house and I really like the final look that it gives. painted whereas the door over there has been painted and there's a specific reason I intend to do a separate video on these because I'm going to modify these doors a little bit and then I did want to have all the paper pulled up for the wrap up of this video and have the carpets laid down but um, I've already moved on to a couple other projects which involve a lot of painting and this is actually a very useful room to continue painting in because I can shut it off completely from all the animals so I'm going to leave the paper down for now and you're not going to see the final product yet um, hopefully in the future, once I have all the carpets down, then I can release like a shorts and you can see what the final product will be with the curtains installed as well. So if you've been following along for the last few months, you'll have noticed I've done a lot of project videos on the house, but I haven't built any projects. You know, I haven't created anything new. That's about to change. So this is going to be a game room, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So I am working on projects for the gaming room. So that's going to come up real soon, and I can't wait to reveal those to you. And until then, I hope you guys subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and stick around by clicking that bell so you know when the next videos are coming out.